Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, this uh, your, this video will talk about uh, two chapters. Okay, I have combined two chapters, principle of option which is chapter 8 and also basic, basic strategies of option which is chapter chapter 9. Okay, so this is the history of option market. Option is, a, is also actually another type of derivative instrument traded in the derivative market. Okay, uh, we have forward, we have futures and we also have option. It is a contract that involves the underlying instrument. Of course, option also must have the underlying instrument. Sebab nama pun derivative instrument. So, kena ada underlying asset. <coughs> Option contract first began in Europe, uh, then in USA as early in 18th century. So as at today, there are many derivative markets and traded options in the world that have been launched. For example, we have index option, stock option and also currency option. In currency option, actually you have learned in FIN 542 uh, in your part 3. Okay, uh, definition and concept of option. Option ni actually is a contract that gives the buyer, the buyer of option eh, those who buy the option, alright, will get the right, okay, the right without obligation. Maksudnya, dia ada pilihan, dia ada option. Option tu maksudnya can opt lah, boleh pilih lah, okay. <coughs> alright, so option is a contract that gives the buyer the right choice or option without obligation to buy or to sell an underlying instrument or the specified asset at the exercise price, okay. The specified price until the maturity of the contract. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in the other hand, on the other hand? On the other hand. Okay, on the other hand, a seller has an obligation to sell or to buy the underlying instrument only if exercised by the buyer. Huh. Okay, so there, there, there are two parties involved. First, the buyer of the option and then the seller of the option. The party who bought the option yang akan dapat right to exercise, okay? Uh, dia boleh nak guna ke tak option tu to buy or to sell the underlying asset. But the seller of the option will have the obligation every time the option is exercised by the buyer. Tak apa, sekejap lagi kita akan faham lagi. The concept is as simple as putting some deposit to buy something lah. You nak beli apa-apa, you bayar deposit. So by by paying the deposit, uh, you ada right untuk beli uh, barang tu okay? Sebab dia macam tanda janji Tanda jadi uh, But you have the right lah Nak beli tak, Jadi ke tak beli Jadi beli ke tak beli It's up to you Okay Tapi Since you have paid the deposit Sebab konsep option tu macam deposit Bila you pergi je kat kedai Kata saya nak beli Barang sekian-sekian Saya dah bayar deposit uh, Jadi seller tu nak tak nak Kena jual barang tu dekat you Why? Because the seller Has already taken the deposit from you Okay so, meaning that the buyer has to pay deposit in order to acquire a right while a seller, bila dia receive the deposit, okay, in order uh, to place him, while a seller will receive a deposit in order to place him with an obligation. Maksudnya, the seller will have obligation to be fulfilled bila buyer of the option to datang untuk guna right dia to buy or to sell the specified underlying asset gitu. Option ni acts like a coupon, okay? For example lah, you shop at Park Sen, nah, 100 ringgit. Then, after you spend your money, 100 ringgit, you get a coupon that allows you to uh, buy a mini frying pan lah, kata pada harga 10 ringgit. You dapat coupon eh, sebab you have spent 100 ringgit there. So, that 10 ringgit tu, exercise price lah. The price that you will, that you can buy the frying pan. Okay, so let's say the coupon will expire in 3 months. On the last day, cukup 3 bulan, you pergi pula Paxson. You find out that the market price, okay, the current spot price or market price of the pen, RM30. You ada coupon kan? Alright, so you will exercise. Exercise kat sini maksudnya guna. Guna your right, okay. Uh, your right, ataupun right that you get from buying the coupon tu. Okay, the option. Why? Because kenapa you nak exercise uh, coupon you? Kenapa nak beli uh, frying pan guna coupon you? Sebab dengan ada coupon, you can buy the mini frying pan at a cheaper price which is only RM10. So, you have you have made profit or you will make profit by how much? RM20 lah. You untung RM20 sebab you ada uh, coupon. Okay? But katakan on the last day you 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 go to the park and you find out the market price of the pen sebenarnya cuma RM8. Of course, you will not use your coupon. Sebab if you use your coupon to buy the pen, you have to pay 10 ringgit. Baik. Beli je terus. Dekat pasaran tu, harga harga di pasaran cuma 8 ringgit. So, you will burn lah. Okay. Ha, you akan rugi lah. You punya 
kupon tu tapi kalau you guna kupon lagi rugi so baik tak payah guna so yang ke atas ni uh, when the market price is higher than your exercise price for this type of option lah this is call option sekejap saya explain what is call option so it is in the money maksudnya bagus berbaloi kalau kita exercise yang kat bawah ni bila the market price of the pen is RM8 but, but the exercise price is RM10 you tak gunakan kupon you untuk beli pen tu sebab lagi mahal so this situation we call it out of the money ha, sebab apa tak berbaloi untuk kita Uh, exercise the coupon to buy the frying pan okay so now let's get back to option tadi dia cerita pasal coupon now let's talk about option okay in order to gain the right to exercise or to use the option the buyer must first pay the premium uh, apa maksud premium tu price of the option lah because the option is not free eh you have in order for you to gain the right you have to pay the price of the option which is known as the premium okay uh, you bayar kat siapa premium tu you will pay the premium to the seller of the option Okay, so this is the diagram, the flow chart, the flow chart, the flow chart of the option contract. Okay, uh, we have two party, buyer of the option and seller of the option. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, I think I I should draw here the uh, what we call the uh, underlying asset. Okay, saya masukkan underlying asset contoh eh. Okay. Alright, so this is actually the underlying asset. Uh, okay. Okay. So to understand this, okay, from the current slide. Okay, so this is the contract. You as the buyer, you buy the contract. Okay. And then this is the seller, uh, the seller who sell the contract or the option contract lah. So if you buy the contract, so the contract give you the right to buy or to sell this underlying asset. But not the, the obligation. Orang tak boleh paksa you untuk beli or jual guna your option. Alright, there's no paksaan because you have the right nak guna ke tak guna. Kalau in the money, you will use. Kalau out of the money, you tak akan guna you punya option to buy or to sell the underlying asset. But the seller... When the seller sell the option to you, okay, the seller will have the obligation if exercised by the buyer but not the right. So, kalau you want to use your right to buy this underlying asset, seller have the obligation to sell. Okay? Alright. Betul tak ayat saya tadi? Saya ulang balik. Eh? If you want to use your right, okay, to buy the underlying asset, the seller have the obligation to sell. But if you want to use your right to sell your underlying asset, okay, so the seller have the obligation to buy the asset. Kenapa? Ha, sebab the option that you have give you the right, but the option that the seller sold to you will give, will give him the obligation every time you want to exercise your op option. Okay? Ha, okay. Uh, so that's the, uh, the 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 brief story about uh, option contract. Okay, let's differentiate between forward, futures, and option. Actually, these three types of derivative instrument kita boleh define as simply as sim as simply as this. Ketiga-tiga ni is actually a contract, okay, or agreement for you to buy or to sell specified underlying asset at specified price lah. However, forward ni adalah privately negotiated market okay maksudnya buyer and seller tu dia boleh negotiate alright private market private negotiation can uh, can be done futures pula adalah derivative that are traded in the exchange okay pastu dia standardized alright ada clearing house alright yang yang jadi orang tengah option ada dua jenis lah ada over the counter and also ada exchange traded option also can be defined as agreement or contract to buy or to sell as spe uh, specified underlying asset Okay, uh, at a specified price, at a specified future date. Okay, cuma bezanya kat mana? Forward and futures, there's no price of premium to open the contract. Uh, tak perlu bayar premium ke uh, uh, in order for you to enter forward or futures contract. But if you want to enter ataupun you want to gain the right, okay, to use the option, you have to pay the premium. Okay, buyer yang kena bayar. To the seller. And then both party, buyer and seller must fulfill the contract. Okay. Kalau uh, kita janji nak beli, kita kena beli yang pihak yang janji nak jual kena ju jual the underlying asset. But but for option contract, 
buyer has the right okay either to use or not the option ha, kalau dia kata dia tak nak pakai kupon dia nak untuk beli aset ke untuk jual aset tak ada siapa boleh paksa but once the buyer decide untuk guna right dia or option dia seller has the obligation to be fulfilled Ha, itu beza dia Kat dari segi dari segi premium dari yang kedua the option holder will have the right okay alright so we will continue in our next video